Shirley Ann Jackson, 18th president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, the oldest technological research university in the United States, fully absorbed her father's principle, aim for the stars. One of only two African-American women in her undergraduate class at MIT, she was awarded a bachelor's degree in physics in 1968, where she also earned a PhD in theoretical elementary particle physics, the first African-American woman to earn a PhD at MIT in any subject, and one of the first two African-American women in the United States to earn a doctorate in physics. Dr. Jackson subsequently conducted research Dr. Jackson subsequently conducted research at several world-renowned scientific enterprises, the Fermi National Accelerated Laboratory, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, and the Aspen Center for Physics. And for 15 years in theoretical and scattering and low-energy physics at AT&T's Bell Laboratories, and as a professor of physics at Rutgers, she led a research team in theoretical physics and taught both undergraduate and graduate students while continuing to consult for Bell Laboratories. In 1995, ja Dr. Jackson was named chair of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission by President Bill Clinton. And during her four years in this role, she restructured the agency's regulatory programs to enhance regulatory effectiveness spearheaded the development of new reactor oversight programs, and reaffirmed the agency's commitment to public health and safety, among her many other achievements. Elected to the MIT Corporation in 1975, and as a life member in 1992, Dr. Jackson is also the recipient of many our honors, among them the New Jersey Governor's Award in Science in 1993. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1998. Her, Her appointment in 1999 as president of Rensselaer was met with universal acclaim, and she has been the catalyst for an extraordinary renaissance at that institution. Highlights include more than 500 million in new construction and facility renovations, a doubling of research awards, the establishment of nationally recognized uh, centers for bi biotech interdisciplinary studies, and the successful $1 billion renaissance at Rensselaer campaign. Over the past several years, Shirley Ann Jackson has made it her mission to raise awareness of the nation's underinvestment in basic research to help ensure that our country maintains its technological leadership and to help address urgent international issues such as global warming. Dr. Jackson champions the full use of all available scientific talent, including especially that of women and minorities. Shirley Ann Jackson, world-class scientist, pioneering educator, and uncommon public servant, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the University of Miami, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa and declare that your name shall be forever inscribed upon the enduring role of our university's honor, honorary daughters and sons. Congratulations. Dr. Jackson and I have been friends for many years. Let me present to you Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. Well, good morning. It is a distinct honor to be here with my friend and colleague, President Donna Shalala, who leads this fine institution with the same distinction she has always displayed whenever she has been called to leadership. And it is a distinct honor to share this special day with you, the 2007 graduates of the College of Engineering 
and the School of Business Administration. I offer you my sincere and enthusiastic congratulations. I received the honorary degree, thank you, and congratulations to you. I received the honorary degree which you have bestowed upon me with immense pride and deep gratitude. Nearly 40 years ago, I was sitting where you are sitting today. I had a great deal on my mind as I sat there. I was nervous and excited, as I expect some of you are. I was thinking about getting across the stage, more or less gracefully, without mishap. I was looking forward to the conclusion of this exercise and to celebrating with my family, of course. But fundamentally, I was nervous a bit about the future, about the great unknown which looms to the fore after one has completed a major undertaking. Indeed, when I was sitting where you are sitting, worrying about the walk to receive my diploma, the future indeed was tremendously uncertain. My generation was deeply impacted by events and circumstances which were playing out across the nation and across the world. We were in the midst of a fundamental societal shift, a shift driven by the civil rights movement and by our involvement in a war on the other side of the globe. The nation was deba debating fairness and equality which ultimately resulted in legislation ending legal racial segregation, voting rights, and the ability to be publicly accommodated all over the country. That debate opened a window and offered whole segments of the population new opportunity and fresh prospect. I was one whose life and career outlook changed because of this debate and its outcomes, beginning early on with the desegregation of the public schools in Washington, D.C., where I grew up, after the momentous Brown versus Board of Education U.S. Supreme Court decision of 1954. Our, our nation was at war when I graduated in Vietnam a war which seemed to have no near-term conclusion. It was a conflict about which many were unclear as to exactly how and why our nation had become involved. It was a war which had grown increasingly unpopular. People of your age were at the forefront of these shifts of which I speak, demanding answers and driving change. You are graduating against a remarkably similar background, a similar societal shift, which is playing out not only in the national theater, but on a global stage. Global because ours is a flattening world, interlinked and interconnected, such that opportunities and threats have no borders. You were in high school when terrorists brought down the World Trade Center in New York City, and I live in New York, and attacked the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. A catastrophic occurrence which has resounded across our nation ever since. The war of your generation is the war in Iraq, an increasingly unpopular conflict not only at home, but among many nations in the global arena as well. But regardless of your feelings about this particular conflict, the global war on terrorism is a conflict without borders, with no clear-cut front or enemy, but it is a war which must be fought and won, although it may be with us for a generation. 